in this section, which is number 11, we're going to go over the air import service model, but the differences between freight consolidation and direct shipments. As we see in red, the topic of this section is the essence of the air freight forwarders service portfolio, freight consolidation. The main feature, as we just said, of the forwarders air cargo service portfolio is freight consolidation. And in our image on the right, that is definitely consolidated cargo actually being weighed at either a forwarders or airline facility. Second bullet, as a consolidator, the air freight forwarder serves as an intermediary between the air carrier and the importer. We spoke of this a bit in prior slides. We're going to go into even more detail now. Really, how does this work? First sub bullet, the air freight forwarder is going to negotiate space and rates with airlines for specific city pairs and flights. London to JFK, Hong Kong to Cincinnati, that's what we mean. Based on cargo quantities tendered to an airline, forwarders negotiate space on aircraft at discounted rates. This is all about volume, volume of cargo, tonnage essentially. The more cargo the forwarder has for specific airport pairs, the better rates they can negotiate. The freight forwarder is going to go to the airline and negotiate rates that are lower than the published tariff rates in the TACT, as we mentioned before. Last sub-bullet, forwarders then will mark up the per kilo buy rate from the airline and offer air freight consolidation services to the air import trade community. In other words, U.S. importers. That is the essence of air freight consolidation. Forwarders aggregate large volumes of cargo, negotiate discounted rates with the airlines, turn around and resell that space on the aircraft to importers. This type of service is called a consolidation because the forwarder is bringing together, consolidating cargo from multiple shippers and consignees. And for clarification purposes, once again, the shipper is the vendor overseas, the consignee is the U.S. importer. The key here, as we see in our first and only sub-bullet, the key is to gain cargo from as many shipper consignees as possible with the same city pair, date of shipment, and service requirements. Aggregating large volumes of cargo. As a trade tip, and this opens up a whole new conversation, the forwarder must be able to identify who between the seller and buyer controls the cargo, and as such, who designates the freight forwarder. This is really, really important. Of course, the seller being the vendor overseas and the buyer being the U.S. importer. Who controls the cargo is just another way of asking who's responsible for paying the freight charges and as such, who has the right to designate who the freight forwarder is. Honestly, this is probably the most important question that a freight forwarder can ask of a U.S. importer. Do you control the cargo? Let's talk some more about that. We'll present the conversation as a supply chain perspective aptly entitled, Who Controls the Freight? One theme that has come up in a number of our training modules is that of Incoterms rules. As mentioned on multiple occasions, Incoterms are important because, among other things, the negotiated shipping term, the Incoterm, determines who between the seller and buyer of goods is responsible for transportation and customs related charges. Needless to say, this is an important point regardless of mode of transport, ocean, air, truck, rail, Inco terms matter. Second paragraph. One question that comes up a lot between freight forwarders and importers is that of who controls the freight? While an important question, it's just another way of asking what Inco terms rule governs a given shipment. In other words, based on the shipping term, is the U.S. importer responsible for organizing and paying inbound transportation? or is the supplier on the hook to organize and pay for goods movement? When a U.S. importer negotiates a shipping term like X-Works, free carrier, or free on board, that by definition means that the importer controls the freight and as such is responsible for designating the freight forwarder and paying the charges. Should a term such as carriage paid to or delivered duty paid be used, it is up to the supplier to organize and pay for shipping. For purposes of our training, we assume that the U.S. importer controls the freight, designates the forwarder, 
and pays for both inbound shipping and customs related costs. That is not an unreasonable assumption. In fact, the vast majority of cargo coming in from overseas, whether it's ocean freight or air freight, is on a freight collect basis, which just means that an Inco term has been negotiating with a vendor that puts the U.S. importer in control of the cargo. They negotiate the rates with the forwarder, they pay the forwarder, they control the freight. Some advantages to using air freight consolidation services. The most obvious, probably, is that air freight consolidation is the core competency of the air freight forwarder. That's what they do. Buy space on aircraft from airlines, turn around and resell that space to importers. Second bullet, for companies that ship via air freight, the consolidated service model is the most economical option. Because freight forwarders aggregate cargo from multiple shippers and consignees, they're always going to have more volume to negotiate with the airlines than any one individual shipper could have. That does not mean that large importers can't go and negotiate directly with an airline. They certainly can. But in the vast majority of cases, forwarders have more leverage because they have more volume with the airlines. They can negotiate rates, turn around and resell them at a price that is still cheaper than what an importer could get from an airline directly. Not to mention that if the importer went to the airline directly, they wouldn't necessarily have all of the services that the freight forwarder offers either. The bottom line here and our sub bullet is that prices per kilo rates are market driven. They are based on the nature of the cargo, dense versus voluminous, the city pairs, time of year, etc. Last bullet, there are many options in terms of working with air freight forwarders. There are many options because there are thousands of air freight forwarders around the world. That is not an exaggeration. It's thousands and thousands of air freight forwarders. Some potential pitfalls to using air freight consolidation services because it can't always be rainbows and unicorns when working with freight forwarders. The first would be no guarantee of lift. And lift just means that air freight moves as booked on an airline. An importer may have to wait for available space, especially if there is a backlog during back to school or holiday season. There's just no guarantee of lift. As such, second bullet, cargo gets bumped. Cargo at origin is booked with a forwarder. The forwarder receives the cargo, maybe tenders it loose to an airline. There's an airway bill, there's a schedule, but the freight doesn't move. That happens fairly frequently. Third bullet, this happens a lot too. Cargo is sent in partial shipments, something we've spoke of a number of times across several flights. This can happen, especially for larger shipments, and especially for large shipments that get booked on passenger aircraft. There's just not enough room between luggage and mail and perishables and live animals, etc. Our shipment as a U.S. importer gets partialized, and that's always bad news. We don't get our stuff when we want it, and typically everything has to arrive before U.S. Customs clearance can be effected. Fourth sub-bullet, there are potential delays due to issues with other shippers' cargo. We're not the only importer that has cargo in a consolidation. There could be five. There could be ten importers. There could be a hundred, for that matter. If something goes wrong with the documentation, the labeling, the cargo of another importer in a consol that we're involved in, everything stops. That's a problem, too. As a trade tip, and this is just some terminology... In the air freight world, cargo getting bumped is akin to ocean freight when a container gets rolled. And we talked about that plenty during our ocean modules. Let's stop here. And when we come back, we'll start talking about the key document for air freight consolidations, the House Airway Bill.